I get the question all the time, is it worth it to go to Patagonia for trout fishing? Ready to go? Dispatch, dispatch, this is Alpha Charlie Yankee. Inbound to Tigre River. <laughs> I would say it's absolutely worth it. The fishing experiences are completely different. The fish behave differently. There's lots of fish. Dale, dale. The views, the setting, I mean, it's all different. The only common thread is the trout. As a program director for South America, uh, it does come with quite a bit of travel and on-site visitations. Uh, for just like this trip where we're here to see the program firsthand, sleep in the beds, eat the food, meet the guides, you know, make sure we've got a very firm and complete understanding of every detail of the program, something that really requires time and it requires being here in person. Uh, yes, it's a lot of fishing and a lot of time on the water, which, you know, I'm not complaining about, but uh, that's really what it takes to be, to really understand it and to be prepared to help our clients as they're choosing what lodge they want to go to and as well as when they're preparing for their trip. So Martin Pescador is the second 11 program that we visited. And Martin Pescador is what I like to refer to as the fishing program. Uh, and within that program, you see two lodges during the course of the week. You start at Rio Yelcho Lodge, which has access to the Yelcho River, the Yelcho Lake, and a few other key fisheries in that area. Then midweek, you move to the Rio Rosalot Lodge, where you're then focusing on the water in that area for the remainder of the week. My first day out of Rio Yelcho Lodge, we were with Miles, and we drove about 45 minutes to the Fudalafu River, which enters Lago Yelcho kind of on the other end of the lake and we spent the whole day on this lower Fuda as they call it and the Boca which is where it actually dumps into the lake. So the Boca is a really cool piece of water and again we scored on weather so we had stunning views across the lake in every direction and it's just vertical walls and big you know open lake. We gave it our best in the Boca and kind of that lower section of the Fuda. We did pick up a few fish, but not the, the size that we were looking for. You know, Miles is really passionate about this part of the river. He had all these cool stories of big fish and, you know, the different techniques that he's been trying and learning through his years here. Um, you know, it didn't come together for us, but still was really fun to fish it. And instead of, you know, continuing on, we just, used the jet and headed up river and got into some different areas. So we did have a little bit of tough fishing. You know, we found fish, but it wasn't necessarily what Miles was expecting. This is a tailwater, you know, so up in Argentina on the other side of the border where the river starts, there's a dam at the top of the system and it is regulated. So that's something you have to deal with is changing flows. When we got back to the lodge, we checked the gauge and we saw they had dropped the flows significantly. You know, not, falling water is good, but this was a massive cut in flow, like 30%. So, you know, that's just a lot for trout to handle. And I think that may have been what shut it down. Full transparency, I may have jinxed the day when I caught a fish at the boat ramp on literally the first cast. Literally first cast, I don't even know if it counts as a cast, hooked a fish, which, is never good, you never want that. And I think that could have been part of our struggles for the day on the food of there. So I come from a, a guiding background. Uh, I've spent years seasonally guiding at destinations, you know, Alaska, Mexico, Argentina, so I really connect with the guides, you know, and, and what they're doing here. And I've been really looking forward to this trip. One of my good friends, Sawyer, is actually one of the guides here. And he's told me about it for a couple years now. 
you know, saying you got to get down here and, and to be here with him, who I've worked with in the past, uh, is super fun. And today we spent the day on Lago Yelcho. Uh, conditions were about as good as it gets. When we left right from the lodge, this time we took a bigger boat, a Ponga, kind of almost seaworthy, you know, pretty big bow because we were going across Yelcho Lake. And Patagonia can have some serious winds. And on these big lakes, you can get five, six foot rollers, which can get a little bit dangerous if you don't have the right boat and if you're not prepared and kind of watching the situation. So jumped in this big boat, we kind of bounced our way out across the lake to get to the spot Sawyer had in mind. And we were able to tuck into a little bay out of the wind and had really good fishing. And it was just really fun to be on the water with Sawyer. You know, we're taking turns fishing. Um, it's just like, you know, fishing back home or fishing with a, a friend. When I come down and visit the lodges and do these visitations, it's really important to see all aspects of the program, you know, from the accommodations to the meals to the fishing, of course. It's really helpful to be able to, with firsthand knowledge, speak to all the details. When people call in, when people send emails, you know, it's really helpful to have been there, done that, so I can clearly explain what to expect, um, you know, when you're on site here at the, at the different lodges. And one important piece is connecting with the guides. You know, the guides are interacting with the guests more than anyone. They're on the water in a very intimate setting all day. You know, it's two anglers, one guide, talking about you know, whatever people want to talk about. And being able to connect with the guides at the different lodges is really helpful to understand, you know, wh how the clients can better be prepared. What information can I pass along to that's going to make a difference for someone's trip? Uh, so. I really look forward to working with the guides and to meeting them and connecting with them. Having guided myself, uh, I feel like I can really connect with them and you know, we can work together to make sure that the client's experience is going to be better uh, through some better preparation. My third day at Martin Pescador, 
I was with Quentin, and again, left right from the lodge uh, in a smaller boat this time, a little G3. So it's really cool to be able to jump in a boat right out of the lodge. There's a lot of other programs in Patagonia where there's some serious drive time, windshield time, and Martin Pescador's lodges are positioned perfectly to cut down on drive time uh, and maximize time on the water. When we left with Quentin, we were moving up the water and it's serious water. This is a huge river coming down with a lot of force uh, and it's you know, moving quickly, they're kind of slowly working around the edges, avoiding the hydraulics and kind of what would be considered scary, maybe a little bit dangerous water, but the guides move up right around through the sweet spot and, you know, eventually poke right out into the lake and start fishing there. When I was fishing with Quentin, we were moving down the Yelcho River, kind of fishing the bank as they normally would, and the water is pretty low right now uh, while we're here. And there's areas where normally the water is ripping through these logs, but I actually hooked a log and we kind of had to go over there and get the fly. And as we were over there, we realized, wow, the, we can stop the boat here and there's actually kind of some t buckets tucked into the side. So we thought, let's just jump out and give it a try. I mean, Quentin had never done it. He knew I was up for some log scrambling and, and that it could be fun. Maybe we find a fish back there. These guides are in touch with the environments they're guiding in. I mean, as you're floating down the river, they are pointing out a tiny little depression that they're aware of or a certain log, a certain current that they know is worth targeting. Uh, but they're always looking for something new and conditions down here are constantly changing so they've always you know they've got their spots that they know but they're looking for something to try you know and and on their day off they're out there getting onto new water or new sections or trying different things that they might not try with clients because because it may not work but they're always kind of pushing the the envelope i guess and, and looking for more information and new intel So this was a transfer day. This is when we were going to move from the first lodge at Martin Pescador, which is Rio Yeltra Lodge, to the second lodge, Rio Rosalot. When we wrapped our day with Quentin, we drove the boat right up into the little dock at the lodge. We jumped out of our waders and hopped in the truck and drove about an hour and a half to the Rio Rosalot Lodge. It's got a very large main area with plenty of room for hanging out, enjoying yourself. The same room has 
you know, the dining area, a great front porch. They've got the hot tub here as well. The rooms are really nice, you know, very comfortable. And they feel really similar to what you see at Rio Yaucho Lodge. So while you do move midweek, it's easy and it feels seamless. So my first day at Rio Ross Lot Lodge, I was with Brock and we left from the lodge and had about a 35 minute drive to the lower Figueroa River. When we got to the put-in, I didn't know it was a put-in. We kind of just pulled over and they said, we're here. And there's kind of like a cliff almost on the side of the road. And they just rolled the boat off and kind of kicked it down to the river. And that's where we started. At the put-in, they also threw a jet motor on our cataract. And this was so we could kind of move up a little bit in the river to get into this really cool canyon section. Brock motored us up to kind of the top section where the water starts to pick up again. You start to get some serious current. And we kind of got set up there. He started rowing and I started fishing. And it was, it was really fun. We were picking up fish off the walls. We were stacking, you know, stacking line, trying to get a big fish out of the deeper stuff. Uh, so some good variety in there. And just the setting itself was spectacular. I mean, I, I would cast and then look around just to take it in, because um, it's that cool. It feels like Jurassic Park. So after we fished the canyon for a couple hours in the morning, we got into kind of the middle section of the lower fig, and there's actually some pretty big rapids that we went through. We're here during low water, so it was nothing too serious, but the guides were always, as we'd go through, they'd say, you know, look over there, the water gets up to there, and it can get pretty big and a little bit spicy when it's that high. Um, but for us, it was, it was no problem, and we were able to fish through the whole thing. Um, and, and as you get to the lower end of the float, again, it changes from kind of these big rapids and big water to more of a flat, super fishy kind of water. You know, that perfect depth, perfect water speed with great structure. So the next day I was with Mark, who is the head guide for the whole Martin Festival program. And he took me to his favorite water, the Rosselot River. The Rosslot River was again completely different than anything we had seen so far 
and it was you know great dry fly fishing we caught a lot of fish and you know you have a target every second you know a little hole a log a drop off a rock and we kept seeing you know browns and rainbows and just the average size fish is really impressive on the Ross a lot and just in this area in general so I had not been to the specific lodges that I'm visiting on this trip, but after seeing them firsthand, fishing the waters, meeting the guides, you know, eating the food, sleeping in the beds, it just, it's critical for me to effectively do my job and help prepare people for the right experience or the weather or the fishing, um, and really to make sure that people are going to the right place based on what they're looking for. I think that's a tremendous value that Yellow Dog offers is an unbiased perspective you know we always like to say we don't care where you go as long as it's the right fit for you so having firsthand knowledge of the programs and the fisheries I feel knowledgeable you know ready to answer any questions or prepare people for what it takes to visit the Los Lagos region in Chile and, and what to expect when they get there On the last day, we went to the Riso Patron, and again, this was a quick drive, not far from the lodge, and totally different than what we had seen. The guides picked this for us because we had major wind forecasted and some pretty serious rain, so this is a good option. It's, it's a smaller piece of water, you still float it, but it's this tight, intimate, you know, river where the wind can't get to you. We were all day, we were watching the treetops blow around. We were definitely in the rain, but we were as protected as we could have been. To see it in the rain, I think added to the experience of being on the Riso Patron, just because it is this jungle, intense, like green and lush environment with overhanging trees and tons of logs and structure everywhere. To see it on a clear day, I mean, I'm sure it would be beautiful, but it wouldn't have that like mysterious feel to it. The Riso Patron is not easy fishing. It's tight quarters. You're fishing a lot of underwater structure, submerged logs and boulders, current seams, and you barely have room for a back cast. But you're streamer fishing, kind of poking around in each hole, trying to get a quick swipe or a quick, quick swipe uh, from a big brown or a big rainbow. It's definitely fun fishing, but intense and requires some patience. Most people coming down to Patagonia have some trout fishing experience or come from a trout fishing background. And while it's good to apply that knowledge and experience to the fishing here, I think it's equally important to listen to the guide. The fishing is different here. The fish behave differently. The water is different here. The food sources are different here. So using your guide and working with your guide and listening to the guide is absolutely critical in finding success on the water. And these guides are out there, they're out there every day. They're trying new things, they are in touch with the water levels. As you drive over a bridge, they look at it and they say, oh, you know, I think it came up a little bit or it's down a little bit. They, they're just so in tune with what's happening on the water that it's really important to let them steer you in the right direction. Zach was great on the water. We had tough conditions. I mean, we had rain in our face, we had cold weather, we had rising river, but he didn't quit. And he was still trying to get me into that next spot, that next bucket, that next hole. Um, so it was really fun. So Martin Pescador was previously owned by Franz and Anna, who you know built this place from the ground up. And Eleven recently acquired it. They've made some renovations, some changes, uh, the changes I think are very positive. It's a really comfortable lodge, you know, incredible fishing program and Yellow Dog and Eleven have a great partnership. We work with a number of their other lodges in other parts of the world, New Zealand, Iceland, you know, the ones here in Chile that, that I'm visiting. Uh, and we're really excited to work with Eleven and they just do such a great job at delivering for their guests.